In this video, I'll show you how to use the expressions there is and there are correctly in English. Now, it might seem that these are very easy, but we're going to talk about them at a basic level, at an intermediate level, and at an advanced level. So this lesson is for everyone, okay? Now, first of all, what does it mean when we say there is or there are? It means that something exists. Something is somewhere, okay? For example, I could say, there is a man waiting to see you in your office, okay? There is a man. Or I could say, there are some people waiting for you in your office, right? There is a man, there are some people. So how do you know when to see, say is and when to say are? Sometimes it's very easy and sometimes it's not easy. And that's where lots of mistakes occur. Now, this is important for you, whether you're speaking, whether you're writing, whether you're writing business email, whether you're writing an essay for the IELTS or the TOEFL, this is a basic mistake and you don't want to make these mistakes, okay? So let's understand what they are by starting off by looking at some basic examples. So first, this is where we have a situation with countable nouns. So if after there is, we have a noun. A noun is what? A person, place, thing, idea, quality, okay? So if we have a noun, which we can count, okay? Then what, what happens? You could have a singular noun, which means one noun, one person, place, or thing. Or you could have a plural noun, which means more than one. So let's see what happens when we have one. When we have one, we say there is. There is a teacher in the classroom. Now, the other thing to remember is that when you have one noun, when we're talking about one noun in English, we need to use this article a or a, okay? Because in lots of languages, that article doesn't exist. So don't forget that. It's not only there is, but if it's singular and it's countable, then you have to say there is a teacher in the classroom. There is a school on the corner. There is a book on the table. Now, there is a is the full form. Usually when we're speaking, we contract it, we shorten it, and we just say there's a book on the table. Okay? Got that? Say it after me. There's a book on the table. All right, fine. Now, what happens when we have many, when we have plural, more than one thing, more than one noun? Then we say there are, you might say another word like there are some teachers in the classroom, there are some schools in this neighborhood, or there are many schools in this neighborhood, or there are some books on the tables. Okay? So here what happened? These countable nouns are very straightforward. Usually we just make them plural by adding an S. Okay? So that's one basic situation. Let's look at another slightly more difficult but still basic situation. This is when after there is or there are, we use a collective noun. A collective noun is a noun that refers to a group that is made up of individuals, okay? For example, there is a family at the park. A family is made up of individual members, but the word describes the entire group. So that's called a collective noun. So with collective nouns also, we have a singular form and we have a plural form. There's a family at the park. There is a flock of birds, a group of birds in the sky. There is a pile of papers on my desk. A pile means like a stack. Everything is piled up, okay? Or we can make it plural. There are some families at the park. There are some flocks of birds in the sky. And there are many piles of papers on my desk, okay? So, these are the basic versions of there is and there are. Now let's look at some intermediate examples. It starts to get a little more challenging. 
Let's see if you can get them right. So now let's look at some other kinds of sentences with other kinds of nouns. So far we looked at what? We looked at countable nouns and we looked at collective nouns. So now we're going to look at uncountable nouns. So what we are seeing here is that we decide whether something is singular or plural, whether to use the singular or plural verb based on what kind of noun follows there is or there are. Okay, so let's look at this one. So what are uncountable nouns? Uncountable nouns are words which we are, sorry, which we cannot use in the plural form, but which we always use in the singular form, always. Even though it might seem like it refers to lots of items, but it's always singular. Let's look at some examples. We say, there is some equipment, okay? Now, if it was countable, we would say there are some computers, because computers we can count. But in English, equipment is a word which is considered an uncountable noun, so it's always singular, okay? There is some equipment. There is some information. There is some research. There is some advice that you should take. There is some homework you need to finish, okay? Now, even though I have given the example here of there is and there are, even if you turn these sentences around, they would still be singular, right? For example, some equipment is in the factory. Some information is available. Some research has been done, okay? But right now, we're trying to see how to use these with that common expression, there is or there are. Now, let's go to another kind of noun and see what happens. It's getting a little bit more complex, but you want to be able to understand how to use these simple phrases with the more complex constructions. So now let's look at what are called irregular nouns. What are those? Well, sometimes they're singular, sometimes they're plural, and sometimes they could be singular or plural. For example, we have this word news. This one is always singular even though it ends with an S. So it can be a little bit tricky because you see the S and you think, okay, in English, S usually means that something is plural. But in this case, that's not true. So this is an example of an irregular noun because even though it ends with an S, it's not plural, it's singular. So therefore we say there is some news, there's some good news, there's some bad news, okay? Next, sometimes we have words which are plural with no S, okay? For example, children or men, women, okay? No S on those words, but we're talking about more than one man, more than one woman, more than one child, right? So again, here we would say there are some children in that room, okay? And then we have some really weird words in English, like fish or sheep or deer, where you have the same word and it can refer to one or it can refer to a million and it's the same word. So there is a fish, okay? Of course, if you're talking about one, we're gonna know that because you have that article a uh, or a, okay? There is a fish in the, in the aquarium or there are some fish in the aquarium. So the singular form of fish is fish and the plural form of fish is also fish, okay? So now that's what you do with the uncountable and irregular nouns. That was the intermediate level. Are you still with me? Okay, so let's go forward now and see what happens at an advanced level, okay? Keep watching. Okay, so now let's look at a noun phrase. A noun phrase is a group of words that behaves like a noun, basically. And they can be singular or plural, okay? So let's look at some examples. We would say, there is a team of experts. Now, this could be confusing to some people because you have here the word team, but you also have the word experts. And team is singular, but experts sounds like it's plural. 
But what we need to do in this case is to ignore everything after the preposition. So the real noun that we're talking about here that decides on the verb that we use is this one. There is a team, okay, of experts, doesn't matter. Forget about what's uh, in the prepositional phrase, okay? So there is a team, that's singular, or there is a group of doctors. Same situation, right? There is a group. It doesn't matter that we say after that of doctors and that the word doctors is plural because that doesn't matter, okay? Next, there are major challenges in the world, okay? So here, how do we decide that it was are? Is it because of challenges or because of the word world? It's because of the word challenges because as I said, in the world doesn't matter right? That's part of a phrase, a prepositional phrase within that, that just explains a little bit about challenges, but that doesn't matter in terms of deciding the verb that we use. So we say there are major challenges or there are employees around the globe, okay? Again, globe doesn't matter, around the globe doesn't matter. What matters? The word employees. And in this case, that's plural. Okay, so this is at a slightly more advanced level, but it's really important. And if you are doing an exam like the IELTS or the TOEFL, or even if you're just writing business letters and you want to be able to write correctly and fluently, then these rules are really important. Let's do a really tiny quiz today of a little bit of what we've learned from that basic and intermediate and advanced use of there is and there are. Uh, let's try this, okay? And then you can do some more on our website. So what should we say here? There are blank snacks available. Snacks are a little something that you eat while you're watching TV, <laughs> okay? All right, there are, good. Because that's, there's an S there and it's actually just a regular countable noun. There are blank a lot of furniture. So what's that one? There, yeah, I heard you. There is a lot of furniture, okay? Furniture is one of those uncountable nouns. There blank a pack of markers. What should it be? Good, 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 I hear you. Uh, somebody's not sure, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, you got it. Okay, there is a pack of markers. And the last one, they're blank. Several errors in this report. What would that be? There? Yep, you got it. There are several errors in this report. Okay, now these were just a few examples just to get you to a little bit practice what we've learned. But really, to get this completely right, to know it inside out, go to our website at www.ingvid.com. There you can do a, a full quiz on this, okay? And really master it once and for all, okay? And next, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, all right, which you can do. And you can also ring the bell so you'll know every time I have a new lesson. And I hope that I can help to shorten your journey in really mastering the English language, okay? Have a good time. Take care. Bye for now.